Hello, my name is Jolie Earlham and I'm a research associate at the University of Manchester in the Translational Radio Bio Biology Group. And today I'm going to talk to you about the importance of understanding the hypoxic status of the tumour microenvironment uh, in relation to cancer patient treatment response and about the hypoxia associated gene expression signatures that we as a group have derived, developed and validated to change the face of precision cancer medicine, directing cancer treatments and improving cancer patient outcomes. And to help achieve this, we have also spun out a company from the University of Manchester called Mantra Diagnostics Limited. <clears throat> So the challenge, there is an unmet need because currently there is no easy, accurate, reproducible way to clinically measure tumour hypoxia. Now, biomarker development is fraught with failure at the moment. 98% of uh, biomarker development programmes fail to progress to clinical application, meaning that all of these studies that have been invested in a patient is never seen the benefit of. Uh, and developing gene expression studies at the moment is attractive. And this is due to the availability of publicly available data sets, which allow the validating of signatures. Uh, and signatures have entered the clinical arena for molecular stratification, such as the ProSigma signature, the Oncotype DX, and the MAMA print. And work in Manchester within our group, we have developed tumour type specific signatures for assessing hypoxia. And our focus and our great strength as a group is our ability to validate, validate, validate our signatures on independently collected clinical cohorts. And our focus has always been uh, on the route to clinical application for patient benefit. So why target hypoxia? Patients with the most hypoxic tumours do worse and their cancer is more likely to spread. And this data is from a landmark paper from the Danish Head and Neck Cancer Group demonstrating how patients with hypoxic tumours have worse outcomes. Um, hypoxic tumours are more likely to spread following surgery and hypoxia leads to resistance to radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, <clears throat> and we believe immunotherapeutic agents will be affected by hypoxia. And we understand and believe that understanding a tumor's hypoxic status is a powerful tool in choosing a patient population where these modern targeted therapies are more likely to work, improving patient outcomes. There are loads of publications highlighting the importance of understanding hypoxia in relation to treatment response. And as long ago as the 1950s, experiments showed that a threefold higher exposure to radiation was required to kill hypoxic as opposed to normoxic cells. It's not possible clinically to increase the dose of radiation to compensate for solid tumor hypoxia. Uh, due to normal tissue toxicity. There's therefore a great unmet need to deliver strategies to identify patients who are at risk and deliver targeted treatments to them, improving patient outcomes. And despite all of this evidence and the high quality data demonstrating the adverse effects of hypoxic tumor microenvironment, and the benefit of targeted hypoxia modifying therapies on treatment response, it is still not routinely delivered clinically. So our solution, we have developed RNA-based gene expression signatures associated with hypoxia generated from the original diagnostic biopsy and they are able to stratify patients receiving various treatments for solid tumors and predict those patients who would benefit from targeted treatments. So 
what tumor specific signatures have we developed? Um, what do we have? So we have four signatures. Um, all four of them are between 20 and 30 genes. They are taken from the original diagnostic biopsy, as I mentioned. We have validated them across multiple platforms, all automated, very easy to score. Um, the prostate, um, bladder, head and neck and sarcoma signatures are all prognostic. And the head and neck and bladder have also shown to be predictive of benefit from hypoxia modifying therapies. For example, um, with the bladder signature, we showed that bladder cancer patients who are identified as having hypoxic tumors who are then given hypoxia modifying therapies have a 30% increase in overall survival. All of our signatures are validated in multiple cohorts, which you can see on this slide. And we also have two signatures in the development pipeline for lung adenocarcinoma and cervix. So we use the pre-treatment pre uh, diagnostic biopsy and we can generate a score within 48 hours. The multiplex nature um, means that uh, it is a gives a robustness to the signature reducing intratumor heterogeneity. And our assays have been technically validated and shown to be sensitive and reproducible. <clears throat> the signature discovery uh, strategy, I'll just give a quick overview because I'm not a bioinformatician, but known hypoxia seed genes were selected and then a co-expression network was developed. Uh, this was done using a large uh, publicly available data sets and independently collected cohorts. They were derived and validated on multiple independently collected um, clinical cohorts. Uh, and the TCGA um, resource really helped us to develop these strategies. So our oldest and most developed signature is the 26 gene head and neck signature. Um, it was briefly, I'll give an overview of its uh, development. It was um, originally developed to be a 99 gene signature. And then this was refined down to the top 26 genes whose expression was most closely connected with the known hypoxia C genes. This was then technically validated and delivered originally on the TACMAN Low Density Array qPCR platform. Um, the signature was shown to be predictive of benefit from hypoxia modifying therapies in a phase three clinical study. And the head and neck signature has just finished its final qualification in the NIMRAD phase three study, which was head and neck cancer patients um, in a placebo controlled trial who received uh, radiotherapy or radiotherapy and a hypoxia modifying agent. We have also developed a health economic model um, to deliver the cost benefit of using our tests or our signatures as a biomarker to identify radiotherapy patients who would benefit from hypoxia modify modification. <clears throat> We have the 24 gene sarcoma signature that demonstrated patients with high hypoxia scores measured during, with the signature have a poor prognosis. And this was demonstrated in two large independent cohorts. We have a 28 gene prostate signature uh, that has been validated in 11 independent cohorts. Prognostic ability has been demonstrated in both high and low risk prostate cancer patients and patients with hypoxic tumors do worse. <clears throat> and finally, we have a 24 gene bladder signature. Uh, it has a similar derivation strategy to the head and neck signature. And in a study where bladder cancer patients were given radiotherapy and hypoxia modifying therapies instead of radiotherapy alone, these patients had a 13% increase in overall survival. However, the patients who were identified as having hypoxic tumors using our signature um, 
they, they showed a 30% increase in overall survival, really demonstrating that it was the hypoxic patients who saw the most benefit from targeted hypoxia modification. So the current patient journey, uh, patients present and are given their cancer diagnosis from the original biopsy. And there's a one size fits all approach, given a low response rate. The beauty of patient stratification, particularly using um, hypoxia, is that the tests can be measured from the original diagnostic biopsy, so there's no extra intervention for the patient. It's very straightforward. Um, and the hypoxia score, if, it's, if they score high, demonstrating they have low oxygen in the solid tumor, at the start of the care pathway, they can be, they can be directed towards treatments that are more appropriate to their tumor microenvironment. And patients who are demonstrated to have a good oxygen delivery, they, they can go towards standard of care and be confident that that's appropriate for them. And this will give a higher response rate. So we are a radiobiology group and all of our research is focused on bringing benefit to radio bio, uh, radiotherapy patients. However, we understand that cancer is treated by targeting the 10 main hallmarks of cancer. And we want to extend the utility of our signatures beyond the area of radiotherapy. Now, all of these uh, hallmarks are influenced by hypoxia. So we decided to focus our attention on the immune activating agents or the checkpoint inhibitors and the PARP inhibitors. Uh, these drugs are radically changing cancer treatment. However, the response rate is really still quite low and being able to identify patients early doors that will respond to these treatments would bring much better outcomes for cancer patients. So our hypothesis is that patients with tumors who have a high level of hypoxia will have a poor response to immunotherapeutic agents. And patients with tumors with high levels of hypoxia will have a good response to the PARP inhibitors. Uh, so can hypoxia, can hypoxia signatures stratify patients for checkpoint inhibitors? Well, hypoxia is immunosuppressive and expression of PD-1, PD-L1, and CTLA-4 is directly regulated by hypoxia. And if hypoxic tumors are resistant to these checkpoint inhibitors, our signatures could be used to select patients with well-oxygenated tumors and increase the probability of response. Um, so, so to demonstrate this, we, we need to do some proof of principle studies to extend the utility of our hypoxia biomarkers. So to address this extending the utility, see if we can offer benefit in other therapeutic areas, we carried out a small proof of principle study looking at recurrent metastatic patients who had been treated with nivolumab, a checkpoint inhibitor. And the study was carried out in collaboration with our clinical colleagues at the Christie Hospital in Manchester in the UK. The hypoxia scores were generated from the original diagnostic blocks, as I mentioned, and the study showed that recurrent patients, that those patients whose disease returned after their primary treatment, they had more hypoxic tumors at the start of the care pathway. And on the right, this is a very small cohort. There is a, blend, uh, a trend for patients with low hypoxia to live longer and remain on immunotherapeutic treatment longer, our tests demonstrating the extension of its utility, albeit in a very small cohort, to identify patients who respond to these agents. Um, we are looking to extend this cohort with our clinical colleagues and hopefully we'll be able to present that in the future. We also have a collaboration with AstraZeneca. Um, with the aim to extend the utility. Uh, we ran our signatures through AstraZeneca clinical cohorts 
and we clearly demonstrated an ability to stratify patients based on their hypoxic status. Uh, we showed that the test was prognostic. Um, the patients who scored high for the hypoxia did worse and died sooner. This is demonstrated by the Kaplan-Myers on the left. I also demonstrated an ability to predict benefit from the uh, IO agent Devalumab. <clears throat> for patients who had low hypoxia scores, um, it's not significant, again, due to the small sample size, but there's a clear discrimination in these two patient populations. And we're working with AstraZeneca to acquire samples from another one of their clinical studies that failed to meet its primary endpoints. Um, we think that using our test, we will be able to um, identify patients based on their hypoxic status who would respond better and we could see if we could improve discrimination by identifying these patient responders and improving the trial endpoints. Now for us to achieve our goals to deliver into the NHS which has always been our focus as a research group and to work with large pharma to extend the utility we needed to migrate our test from the qPCR platform over onto a platform that fitted in with clinical workflow. And to achieve this, we've transitioned from uh, qPCR, as I mentioned, onto the targeted RNA-based next generation sequencing panel. And this fits in seamlessly with what the genomics laboratory hubs in the UK use as their workflow. And the genomic laboratory hubs are the organization that deliver the genomic tests for cancer patients into the NHS uh, in the UK. This would also allow us to deliver for biomarker-led clinical trials, which we have in the pipeline. And we could offer, also offer it as a research use only tool to retrospectively evaluate uh, immune oncology agents uh, to see if our test could uh, identify patient responders. We want to clinically deliver our test for radiotherapy patients. That has always been our focus. Um, and as mentioned, we fitted in with the clinical workflows by migrating onto an NGS panel and demonstrating its concordance with our original platform. And we've worked with or are working with the Northwest Genomics Laboratory Hub um, to deliver this for patient benefit. And the release of the NIMRAD outcome data, the um, final phase three qualification that I mentioned before, will be input into a health economic framework, which we've had commissioned, which will give a cost benefit, hopefully, for using the test to identify patients who would have benefited from hypoxia modification prior to the radiotherapy. And this, if this shows a cost benefit, um, then we can lobby NICE for our test to be used as a biomarker prior to radiotherapy treatment. So in summary, the advantages of patient stratification based on hypoxia, it is a non-invasive test taken from the original diagnostic biopsy. It gives information across the whole of the patient population and Patients who are identified as being hypoxic at the very start of the care pathway can be directed to appropriate treatments. And those patients that have good oxygen delivery, uh, not hypoxic tumours, can be confident that the treatment that they're getting is the best for them. And the take home message for me today is that tumour hypoxia is important and Hypoxia can and should be measured in all studies. Thank you very much for listening and my contact details are there if you'd like any more information. Thank you.